If you told me about a Souls-like ARPG with the art direction of Arcane, the League of Legends show, with adventurous vibes similar to Fable, made by the team behind Ori and the Blind Forest, and Ori of the Will of the Wisps, I would say give me that right now and take my money. And that's exactly what Rest for the Wicked from Moon Studios has graciously delivered unto us. And before you ask, Yes, it has endgame, yes, it has multiplayer, and yes, it has WASD or controller based movement. But if you're a mouse and keyboard purist like myself, don't worry, they're gonna have that too. Now, this is a spoiler free overview, but No Rest for the Wicked is a very story centric game, as you can tell simply by the art direction. But in classic RPG fashion, we wind up with nothing to our name and a problem to solve, starting off on a beach. And oh my god, look at those arms! It's like they've never heard of leg day. I humbly present to you no armrest for the wicked or i mean uh no rest for the wicked now combat what would any good arpg be without combat it is the first letter in arpg the action in no rest for the wicked it's a souls like so it has different move sets for every single weapon in the game it has blocks it has parries it has environmental effects it has dodge rolls side steps it has magic it has bows two-hander swords daggers it's got everything you can imagine or ever want in a low medium fantasy world and now again what would souls like be without bosses now only one boss has been showcased so far work the torn and it looks incredible. I don't think any game besides Lost Ark has even come close to what it looks like this kind of bossing would be. Taking attack timings into consideration and trying not to die before you actually get your shot at hurting the boss, it seems like it's going to be a fantastic time. Now the combat is amazing, but it would be sad if it just stopped after the campaign. In the end game, you're going to be able to go back through the areas that you've already cleared in the campaign with new enemies and new enemy typings and combinations and new loot and rewards to find along the way. And there's also a crucible boss rush type system and they haven't gone into much detail about the end game as of yet but it does look very promising. Now No Rest for the Wicked features soft classes meaning there aren't any hard classes that you pick at the start of the game you just kind of pick the appearance of your character and then start equipping your character and leveling up your character and managing your equipment weight and managing all your defenses and general stats and equipping different combinations of items so that your play style creates your class as you go through the game now every rpg has customization and every rpg has items now there are four types of items in no rest for the wicked normal items which are very malleable and you can make them do essentially whatever you can possibly craft them to do. Magic items, which are essentially pre-crafted normal items. Cursed items, which give you very strong effects for taking on a very strong weakness. Now, of course, there's a lot of strategy to this. And then unique items, they're basically legendaries and crafted by Moon Studios team. Now the world, the art style, everything seems incredible. It's a very vertical, it's a very adventurous kind of game. There are tons of secret areas like old school adventure games and the draw distance is out of this world. You can see essentially the entire world if you find a proper vantage point within that area. The game also features a dynamic weather system and you're going to be experiencing this as you just go throughout the game. And there's also life skills, you can chop down trees, you can fish, all the good stuff that we all sort of kind of want in every RPG. Now Sacrament is what they're calling the hometown or the town hub and this area will evolve over time as you build it back up. You're going to be able to upgrade your gear here, you're going to be able to upgrade different shops and just build flat out new buildings buildings that weren't there before, and there's also a very extensive player housing system in the game. Now this looks to be one of the most natural and organic player housing systems that I've ever seen, and I'm not usually one to play around with these kinds of systems, however in this case I feel like it would be a shame not to. Based off of the vibes that I'm getting, based off of the live streams that I saw directly after the full reveal that they did, I just want to play. It just seems like one of those games where you're just going to have a fun time playing. It just feels like a game that you can just immerse yourself in and get lost in and sincerely enjoy, like I did with Dishonored, like I did with Oblivion, like I did with Fable, like I did with Hollow Knight. And they're planning on doing future updates for it as well. I'm, I'm super, super excited to play this game. Oh, and did I mention that there's PvP in this game too? And that the game was made with multiplayer in mind from the ground up? And it's already coming to early access on Steam on April 18th. I hope this gave you a nice overview of what No Rest for the Wicked has on offer and whether or not that it seems like a game that you might want to get yourself because whew, I, I I know I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna be playing this game. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.